guys! So, today we're going to talk about GraphQL and REST APIs just in general, so let's get into it. Now, for the people who most, li most likely haven't worked with REST APIs before, a REST API is simply a endpoint that returns some data. Now, that's not a very satisfying answer, now is it? But let me kind of walk you through it. So the idea behind a REST API is that traditionally you may, may have suspected that the web and network-based programming, the way that you interact with a web page in a browser, that's using HTML. Now HTML, what happens when you go to the server and basically are, you're shown this page that you see in front of you in your browser is that you're going to an endpoint. It's just a route on a server somewhere that is mapped to some IP address on the web that is going to return an HTML page and that's basically it. It's just a file. Now the thing here is that HTML allows you to express certain things. It allows you to tell the browser that, hey, I want this page to have this information, it should look that way, and it may even include some other files like JavaScript files and CSS files and so forth and so forth. Now, this is very useful to show information to a user, a human user of some sort, which, you know, it's, that's usually what you want, right? But for a REST API, what you're actually doing is that instead you do the same sort of thing, but you get a, just the data. That's what you're doing. And this is very, uh, the reason why this is fairly common is because you don't want to make assumptions about your, your client, basically, who is going to get your data. I mean, in the, in, when you send HTML, you assume that the person who is, or the client, that is getting that information is going to be a browser because it's really only a browser that can use HTML in a meaningful way. But with the REST API, it doesn't really matter. And there are tons of practices about REST APIs. I mean, how should you structure them? Should you have like what URL structures should you follow? What nouns should you use? And so forth and so forth. Now, the fundamental problem with REST APIs is that there is a practice today and it kind of follows this this idea which is it's a philosophy around REST APIs and basically the idea is that if you have let's say take a user you will have an endpoint something like slash users and the idea behind good REST API design is that you should use the well, basically, the HTTP method, methods such as get, post, put, and delete, in order to express what it is that you want to do on that endpoint. Because it used to be the case that, a very, and to a point it's still actually very common, that <coughs> you would simply state that, all right, I want to delete a user. So you would create a, an endpoint that simply said something along the lines like user slash ID slash delete. In other words, you would use the URL path to express the execution of the function that you actually want to happen on the server. But rest, restful, uh, being RESTful, has to, in that scenario, you would simply use the HTTP method. Now, what people started realizing with REST is that it is great to create a REST API for comprehension and for documentation purposes, because it's much easier to, like, to create a very nice, clean, public-facing API if you have this sort of structure. It's very easy, it's very intuitive, and it's fairly easy to work with. But there is one limitation, and that is that it's very rare that an entire application and all the complexity that comes with application development can be expressed through through these simple nouns. So a user, for example, yeah. Let's say I like, creating and updating and doing all these CRUD operations on a user. I mean, that's, that fits very well into restfulness. But what if you wanted to express sending an email to that user? What if you wanted to express sending a special type of email? Well, then you can have queries and you can do other fancy stuff. But people fairly quickly realize that in order to be able to kind of do something meaningful with this, you're going to have to have a few endpoints, not just the user. So you might have a, an endpoint for emails and that sort of thing. And then you may have a user. So maybe you do something like email slash user ID slash send, for example. 
But now you have two endpoints. So now you need to do two requests in order to express what you really want. Because first you need to get the user and whatever associated information you have there. And then you need to go to the email endpoint and send the email. So now you have two requests. Now, this is actually a fairly common problem. And it grew to the point where some websites would actually have a lot of issues where in order to show the user, because nowadays, you know, everybody's all about SPA frameworks like React, Angular and so forth. So API driven applications is a term that is very common. It's very, very used, very popular. People kind of realize that, wow, it's not that great if you, I mean, this example I had is just two endpoints, but you know, imagine if you had maybe five or six endpoints that have this restful mindset, which is, as I said, it's great for documentation purposes, it's great for usages, but for performance, it's absolutely horrible because you need to make all these network requests in order to execute just showing the page. Like if you wanted to show a complicated page, you may need quite a lot of data and you may have different models that contains that data. So what you really want is a compound representation of your data. And that's where GraphQL comes in. So GraphQL comes into the idea where basically you have a server in front of your, all your endpoints. So instead of your client talking to each endpoint and gathering up all this data, creating basically a compound representation of all this data together or reducing it, if you will, down to something that can be meaningful to the consumer or the client, you have a server that does that for you. Now, this is a simplification because there's quite a lot of other tricky on top of it where you have a, a very expressive query language that allows you to basically let the client express, hey, I want these things to be on my model. And then the implementation of your GraphQL server should reflect that. So in other words, you get a query from the client saying that this is the view I need, fix it. And then it's simply a matter of reducing down, basically allowing GraphQL to make these calls. And usually they are on the same network, like ideally you want to have your API endpoints together with your GraphQL server so that they can communicate very effectively because it's much a much shorter trip for a GraphQL server that's running in the same cluster to go and talk to all these endpoints as opposed to having your client that could be any, anywhere on the planet doing that fairly straightforward way. The one thing that is thing to notice here is that this is of course just my personal experience and my personal preference but something that like GraphQL is an amazing tool for a very specific use case. And the specific use case I'm talking about is that if you have an ecosystem of endpoints, in other words, you have tons of these different REST APIs that you need to communicate to in order to basically show the view to the user or to create this compound representation of your data, then GraphQL is amazing because it allows you to basically have a single place which handles all this for you but if you have a single server in other words you just have one api then it doesn't really make much sense so my rule of thumb for graphql and some people do this right as in my experience and some people yeah, well they don't do it right in my my personal opinion just make sure guys that if you're uh, because graphql is another another layer on top of your application it adds complexity so you need to justify that complexity somehow so just take this with you if you are using restful apis you have multiple like a lot of different servers that are handling these different requests that you need in order to show the view to the user then start considering using something like GraphQL. But don't just add it in if you have a single API and a single client, because then it's much easier to just let them communicate back and forth directly with each other. That's at least what I've found to be the best approach to thinking about GraphQL. Have a great day.